Hello everyone. Um, happy Valentine's Day. Um, I hope some of you are having a good Valentine's Day. And for those who are not, I pray that God will comfort you and give you a blessed day and and be with you for those who are, are lonely. The, the message, the title of the Valentine's Day message is Only the Lonely. And it's about my testimony on my struggles on finding dates and how, and how God found my wife for me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I, I thank you for my spouse and for those of you, the, those of the, you who those of them who are listening to my message that are hurting i pray you will ease their minds comfort their minds keep because some of this material we're going to go through may cause sensory issues i pray you'll keep them calm i pray that you may declare that you love us comfort us in this message and and make sure you, they know your love for you, that they know that you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's, let's get into the message. Um, the title is Only the Lonely. Roy Kelton Orbiston was an American singer, songwriter, and music and musician known for his impassioned singing style, complex song structures, and dark emotional ballads. His music was described by critics as operatic, earning him the nicknames the Cursor of Rock and the Big O. Many of Roy Orbison's songs conveyed vulnerability at a time when most male rock and roll performers choose to project defiant muscularity he performed while standing motionless wearing black clothes to match his black dye hair and dark sunglasses where he wore to counter his shyness and stage fright the song was only the lonely know the way i feel orbiston and melson tried to pitch it to elvis presley and the every brothers but it was turned down they instead recorded the song at RCA Victor's Nashville studio with sound engineer Bill Porter trying a completely new strategy building the mix from the top down rather from the bottom up and beginning with a close main back backing vocals in the foreground and ending with the rhythm section soft in the background and the combination became Orbiston's trademark sound Valentine's Day is for lovers, and it's also with people with broken, bitter hearts who hate all those lovers. Even though some flourishes in this operatic male temporal ballad are a little tired, backup singers were actually sing bum 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 mia it would take up a notch key changes no song ever did to make more loneliness feel like a fatality the origin of valentine's day also called saint's valentine's day or the feast of saint valentine is celebrated annually on february 14th it originated as a christian Fest day honoring one or two early Christian martyrs named Saint, Saint Valentine, and though later folk traditions became a significant cultural, religious, commercial celebration of romance and love in many regions in the world. There are a number of martyrdom stories associated with various Valentines connected to February 14th, including an account of the imprisonment of 
of St. Valentine of Rome for ministering to Christians persecuted under the Roman Empire in the third century. According to an early tradition, St. Valentine's restored the sight to a blind order of his jailer. Numerous later additions to the legend have better related to the theme of love in 18th century and I think it's embellishment I think that's the word to the legend claim he wrote the jailer's daughter a letter signed your valentine it's a farewell before his execution another additional post that St. Valentine's Day perform posits oh it's posits perform weddings for Christian soldiers who were forbidden to marry the Feast of St. Valentine was established by Pope Galerius I in, eight, in 496 AD to celebrate on February 14th in honor of St. Valentine of Rome who died on that, on that date in 269 AD. The day became associated with romantic love in the 14th and 15th centuries when notions of Courtney love flourished apparently by associating with the lovebirds of early spring in 18th century England. It grew into an occasion in which couples expressed their love for each other by pressing flowers, offering confectionery, and sending green cards known as Valentine's. Valentine's Day Symbols that were used today, including heart shaped outline doves and the figure of wing get Cupid. Since the 19th century, handwritten Valentines have given to a mass, product, mass produced greeting cards in Italy. St. Valentine's keys are given to lovers as a romantic symbol and an invitation to unlock the griever's heart as well as to the children to war off epilepsy called St. Valentine's May Lady. St. Valentine's Day is not a public holiday in any country. Although it is official feast day in the Anglican Communion and the Lutheran Church, many parts of the Eastern Orthodox Church also celebrate St. Valentine's Day on July 6th in honor of Roman pass, pass by to St. Valentine and July 3rd in honor of Valentine, the Bishop of Antimina. The day is popular in, in the United States as well as in Britain, Canada, and Australia. It is also celebrated in countries including Argentina, France, Mexico, and South Korea. In, in the Philippines, it is the most common wedding anniversary and mass weddings of hundreds of couples are not uncommon on that day, date. The holiday has expanded to expressions of affection along relatives and friends. Many school children exchange Valentines with one another on this day. If some, for some, it's not a happy day to look forward to, especially single people that don't have anybody. If you're not happy during Valentine's Day, you're not alone. Although it's only life were like a romantic comedy or advertising, Valentine's Day is certainly a happy occasion for many. An opportunity to spend a day with that special someone or for some someone's a time to generate more memories to show your love or feel loved. But for others, it is anything but even if if you're in a relationship. For a number of people that are commercially designated day of love can actually cause stress, anxiety, unhappiness, even depression. For people like me with autism, what are the issues with autism? Many people with autism crave intimacy and love, but they don't know how to achieve it in a romantic relationship. They could feel blind to everyday subtitle social cues from their partner this could cause conflict and hurt feelings. I can relate. Seven verses 
when you feel alone. The Bible talks about loneliness and how God is with us. Here are seven verses in Scripture to help you when you feel alone. Have faith in these words because God's promises are true. Put them in places where you go when you feel lonely. Write them in your write them down, bathroom mirror, you know, you name it. Make them the lock screen on your phone. Tape them on your computer. Memorize them in order to recall them, whatever you feel long. Say them out loud until they're deep within your heart. There are also Bible verses for depression, anxiety, or any time you feel overwhelmed. They can be a great encouragement to you. The Lord, Psalm 145 verse 18 through 19. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth, he fulfills the desires of those who fear them. He hears their cry and saves them. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you or forsake you. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me all who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am a gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Isaiah 41 verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God, I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Isaiah 40, 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you talk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will set you ablaze. 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, in every si but in every situation, but prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, trans all understanding, will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. We've all been there, lonely, l longing to feel connected, needed to be known, wishing relationships weren't hard or so hard, hard to find. Wanting closer friends who people who get us in the deep down soul make friends forever way. Wishing people knew us well enough to sense what's what we are going through and what we need. Searching for a place to pour out all the stored up love in our hearts. A place to serve, to give, to offer our precious gifts. For some of us Loneliness is an occasional struggle for others. It's a constant shadow. Loneliness has been especially prevalent during the isolating unknowns of quarantine and social distancing. We have all felt the pangs of loneliness as never before. The Bible offers deep encouragement for all seasons in loneliness. We find examples of men and women in Scripture grappling with loneliness and bringing their hurting hearts to God. We find Prayer, prayers to pray, encouragement for our Father and ideas to move forward. Three words of advice for Christian men longing to marry. Marriage is a wonderful thing so much that many single men spend a lot of time and effort looking for the perfect woman to marry. Sadly, they miss out on one of the most important times of their lives, being single. Did you know that you can waste your present by thinking too much about your future? The Lord Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 verses 31, 34, verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day for its own trouble. They said, I'd like to encourage all single men who are excited to marry. Here are three words of advice from a happy married brother in Christ. Give all your all to God. Guys, you need to remember that before you become someone's husband, 
you're first and foremost a child of God and a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the most important things you will bring to your marriage is your ability to lead your marriage in spiritual matters. Your, your relationship with God will not only allow you to lead your wife in the prayer day, the, but it will allow you to lead your future wife and kids into God's will. Give your heart, mind, and all that you're per pursuing an intimate relationship with God through Bible reading, prayer, and obeying God's word. Be the best man you can. Many single men out there looking for the perfect wife, but not as many work hard as themselves to become the per perfect husband. Ironic, right? The Bible tells us that whatever we do, we should do it heartily for the Lord. Colossians 3.20 Colossians 3 verse 23 When you marry you should do it first for the Lord and then for your wife and then yourself. Develop a servant's heart. Remember that you'll be spending a lifetime commit for one to one woman and it's your goal to be the best servant you can to your wife. Enjoy your single life. Lastly, enjoy your single wife while you're still single. Many men out there marry hastily thinking it will complete them sadly because they aren't re really ready for it and still longing for the fe feeling of freedom from accountability and responsibility to wife they leave their spouses brokenhearted so friends enjoy the life while you're single give time that causes that glorify god and benefit your fellow men Grow in God, learn a lot of lessons, give yourselves to others, and share what you have to the, those who don't. Let your single life to the full so that it's when it's time to marry, you won't feel any regret. Just don't commit sins. And guys, I hope that you choose to pursue God instead of spending a lot of yourself longing for marriage when you prioritize God. It won't be so hard for you to find the right one after all. Houses and riches are inheritance from Father, but a prudent wife from the Lord. But a prudent wife is from the Lord. Another research I, I did on the internet. This was from the internet. Of course, this was not my words. Um, here are the... This was what Jen Cattleman, my singles leader... Gave me some more advice how to get through the five parts, five hardest parts of Christian singleness. One of the topics that came in the responses to my question, loneliness here are the responses people showed. Desire to be loved by a man or to have a man to love. I wish, like, I wish I had a boyfriend just so I wouldn't feel that lonely at times. I wish. I have someone to share my journey with God. And the man, the desire to be loved by a woman or have a woman to love, like I wish I had a girlfriend just so I wouldn't feel that lonely at times and would have someone to share my journey. Every time there's exciting news to share or a bad day to vent about, I'm sick and need someone to take care of me, needing emergency contact on medical forms when your work hosts marriage retreats i'm reminded how single i am the world doesn't cater to the singles the way it caters to couples so how do you deal with loneliness of christian singles there are some practical solutions like focusing on the relationships you do have spending time with family close friends in your church community but perhaps often overlook approach is acceptance. Sometimes we try to push away the loneliness and deny how we truly feel. Denying your feelings is not healthy and you don't want to wallow in your loneliness, start mopping around. But if you minimize the pain and you feel it in being single, you're not caring for your own heart the way it needs. If, you, if you're not honest about your loneliness, your pain and your disappointment, you will not be able to experience the comfort God wants to give you in your struggles. You will have to allow yourself to be honest about your feelings so that you can be honest with God. God doesn't doesn't need you to deny your loneliness or relationship disappointment. I believe he would rather you be honest so he could walk with you through the pain. 
Second Corinthians chapter one, turn there. Second Corinthians chapter one. We're going to be looking at verses three through five. Praise to be praise to be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in our troubles. So we could comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. We share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ. So also our comforts abound through Christ. And let's go to confusion. Another topic, another common struggle that Christian singles experience is confusion. Wanting to be married when you have no good dating options can be hard knowing what to do next. You will not always be clear. Even when you have, do have some good options, you are starting to date someone. The confusion doesn't go away. With every new season with Christian singleness, there will always be some element of mystery and a lot of unknowns. So how can you deal with confusion in your season of singleness? One of the best paths to take is when you are confused in life to focus more on what you do rather than constantly dwelling and you do not know. If you're wondering if you will marry this person you just met, that's too big a question. Start with what you do know is the two of you have agreed to go on a date. Focus on the date, not the dates that may or may not happen. If you get married, have kids, and get the dream job you always want, believe it or not, you will still have lots of unanswered questions in life. If you do not learn how to deal with confusion in your singleness, you'll continue to struggle with this in other areas of life too. Jesus says, one who is faithful in Luke, okay, sorry, Luke 16, 10. Jesus said, one who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. Perhaps the most important step to take is when you're dealing with confusion and unknowns is to remember the sovereignty of God when you truly believe that God is in control and he, that he loves you. This truth will overcome your doubts and you know the future. But if you're a Christian, you know the God who controls the future when you really embrace the truth that will bring you all the peace you need. Proverbs 19.21 Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but what is the purpose of the Lord or, or that will stand? Anger towards God. One bad approach to a belief in the sovereignty of God is getting mad at God for not giving you the relationship that you want, even though you know if he could, you know he could if he wanted to. Many people in a season of unwanted Christian singleness struggle with anger toward God. This type of thinking, however, is unbiblical. While God can do whatever he wants because he's God, we also must see the sovereignty of God through the lens of God's love. God will always do what is most loving. We can't always know why God is withholding a certain blessing that we desire, like a Christian marriage, but we do know that God is love and this he will always act in love towards us. When we do not understand how God actually loves us, but we are experiencing a different expression of love than he is giving anger, can, then he is giving anger to occur. God's love is for us is not expressed through giving us everything we want the way we want. His love is expressed through saving us or others from pain or death. John 11, 3 through 6. God's ultimate expression of love for you and me is to do what will shape us into the image of Christ for his glory. Romans 8, 28 through 9. And Dr. Henry Cloud and... Okay. 
When Paul planned trips that didn't work out, he accepted the sovereignty of God. He asked God repeatedly for a certain kind of healing that God could not give him. God said, no, I do not choose to love you in the way that you want right now. I choose to love you in, with my presence. God did not reject God for saying that balance. So what should you do if you're angry towards God? You should look to see yourself if your definition of love is the same definition God is using. He may not always change your present circumstances the way you want, but he's always present, which can always change you. Sexual temptation. When you ask people what the hardest part of singleness for them, many Christians say that sexual temptation is their biggest challenge. So how can you overcome sexual temptation your season of Christian singleness? This is the right question to ask because marriage will not solve the root to your sexual sin. The sexual temptations will be different in marriage, and marriage can help you with sexual temptation. For First Corinthians 7 verse 5, but if you never learn to resist temptation, you'll still fail to sexual temptation with a marriage to a porn. Addiction will still live in you even when you go from singleness to marriage. To overcome sexual temptation, singleness, you have to enjoy Christ more than you enjoy sin. You have to learn to, to, learn to live from your new identity in Christ. In addition to focusing on your new position in Christ, you also express your newness through Christ through practical steps. self ridicule There are so many more common struggles for Christians who want to be married. self ridicule however, can be one of the most self-defeating struggles one might experience in a season of unwanted singleness. When your friends Family members all seem to start marrying off. It feels like you're the only person who hasn't found the one yet and you've become your worst enemy. I am so unworthy to be loved. I'm unattractive. I'm so boring. I'm so awkward around people. No one could ever love someone like me. When you start inflicting these negative blows on your response, Self in response to a prolonged season of singleness, you end up making the situation worse. The more you put yourself down, the less likely you'll be healthy enough to meet, date, and marry someone when you believe terrible things about yourself and will not take the normal steps needed if you actually want to get married one day. You'll be frozen, self-doubt, and shame. Unfortunately, there's not an easy answer as to why there's so much suffering in the world, why God allows some people to carry more pain than the Bible says we can only see a portion of the answer right now, but will one day be revealed. First Corinthians thirteen twelve for now we will see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face I know I know in part that I shall fully know even as I've been fully known. God cares about your suffering because he knows what it's like to suffer. God visited earth in the person of his son Jesus Christ. He suffered through torture and a brutal death on the cross even worse because he was perfect. Jesus did not do anything wrong, didn't deserve to die. God has, hasn't abandoned you and he's with you through your pain and when you trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior you can be sure nothing in this world not even suffering can separate God. The Bible promises that nothing can ever separate us from God's love neither life, death, nor angels, nor demons neither our fears, nor worries, nor even powers of hell can separate God's love no power in the sky above below indeed nothing in all creation can separate us that is real in Christ Jesus our Lord Romans 8 verses 38 through 39 everything changes when your focus swifts, swifts away from your painful circumstances and look to Jesus open your heart to him and thank 
and that he loved you enough to go to the cross, then you will understand what God says. If God is for us, who can ever be against us since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us, but won't give us everything else. Another struggle for a signal is, this is for me, before I met Margaret, Valentine's Day was an emotional, painful day for me. I was someone who, sh I am someone who struggles with autism. I really had a hard time getting a date and finding a spouse. Resented and hated myself. And hated ever being born. Having parents who were upstanding members of the community involved with so many things. My, my dad was well known. He was an autograph expert. He was president, vice president of an airline um, repair company. He was treasurer of the Universal Autograph Collectors Club. He, and later president. He was a very popular man. He knew a promoter of Star Trek conventions and I was able to meet Star Trek stars like William Shatner, DeForest Kelly, James Duham, and most other Star Trek stars. I have also met other famous stars and went on a trip to California with him like Mickey Rooney and Jonathan Winters. With me meeting many different celebrities, you think girls would want to go out with me, but but wasn't so. My social life and at school was mostly hell. I had a hard time making friends. I was always getting into fights and always picked on as a kid because of my autism. Hardly anyone wanted anything to do with me because of my autism. At Star Trek conventions, there was times I struggled fitting in to my father's friends. I had a few friends there. And, and other autograph conventions my dad did. I just didn't feel fitted. Me and my dad were different. When I went to regular school, I was ex I I was expelled from middle school and wound up in a mental hospital for months. Mainly I was expelled because I fought back, I was picked on and it got too violent and then I wound up in a mental hospital for months and placed in a school for the emotionally disturbed until I graduated from high school. I didn't get the greatest education. Mostly therapy. It was a school who had a mixture of deaf kids, autism spectrum kids, and out of control bad kids with criminal records. I was one of the targets and experience in that school chaos and out of control like a state hospital. My parents, it seems, or I felt they seemed embarrassed of my autism. They tried to raise me to be emotionally strong and seem at times uncompassionate when I went through tough times. My parents tried psychiatrists to strengthen me and change me, but it didn't really help me. Later on, only Jesus could give me the compassion I needed. I lived in the state of Florida most of my life. During my childhood and as a teen, I had imaginary friends and my toys and video games were mostly my social life and world. Also, my parents loved Roy Orberston and I did too. He, and I could relate to, he had social awkwardness in like me and those songs I listened to, I kept, I used to keep a Roy Orbiston cassette tape and a walk, a Walkman which played cassette tapes and radios with headphones when I rode the bus to school and home and going to and from school. I listened to his songs, Pretty Woman, fantasized Kelly LeBrock's character, Lisa. Other songs I used, I used to smooth my mind were Only the Lonely, You Got It, A Love So Beautiful, and The Real World and Others. It seems he knew how to soothe my mind. The sad part was I didn't get into his songs until two years after his death. The movie Gremlins, my favorite stuffed toy I had, I have, I have today, was that cute gremlin character was Gizmo. He gave me some comfort in my mind. He was real. When I, when I was 10 till my early 20s, I always kept that Gizmo doll and my Walkman cassette player and my backpack, never took them out, fearing other kids would damage those things. 
I never dated in my middle school and high school years because no girls wanted me. I love the movie Weird Science, which had Kelly LeBrook. For those who don't know what that, have not seen that movie, I don't know what it was. It was a movie that had two nerdy socialites who were humiliated by bullies over their swooning cheerleader girlfriends rejected and disappointed at their direction in life and wanting more Gary convinces the upright Wyatt that they need a boost of popularity in order to get their crushes away from Ian and Max alone for the weekend with Wyatt's parents gone Gary is inspired by the 1931 classic Frankenstein to create a virtual woman using Wyatt's computer infusing her with everything that could could see to make the perfect dream woman. After hooking electrodes to a doll and hacking into a government computer for more power, a power surge creates Lisa, a beautiful, intelligent woman with unlimited magical powers. I wish, when I was there, I wish they had the technology to do that. I ne- and I never went to my high school prom. My wife did. She didn't go to the same school as I did, so we lived in separate states. And never dated as a teen until I left high school. On one Valentine's Day that caused the biggest hurt, there was this girl who was very attractive, was on the popular clique that hit it on me. And, she, and on Valentine's Day, it, she looked like she wanted to kiss, but instead humiliated me by slapping me and had I didn't realize she, I, she said she broke up with her boyfriend. She had her boyfriend beat me up along with other guys, and I related to those other nerdy characters and wish I could create a wo- woman like that. And sad, and it wasn't a real movie. And, and another character I can relate to was any of you watch WWE wrestling? If it, if before WWE, it was known as the World Wrestling Federation. Hulk Hogan, any, any of you? Anyway, which had Hulk Hogan in it. And one wrestler I was able to relate to, I don't know if any of you heard him, was George the Animal Steel. Anyway, you could look him up on YouTube and all that. George had a feud with Macho Man Randy Savage, who was Intercontinental Champion, had a lovely, beautiful woman, Madge Elizabeth. And they showed him treating her badly and George and George had a crush on her I said I wish I had a woman like that I would treat her like a a wrestling show called Saturday Night's Main Event in March 1987 it had Macho Man defend his Intercontinental title against George Yamosia also Elizabeth was on the line as well and I was rooting for George but he lost the match and and I was disappointed and I said, this is how my life seems it's going to be. And a lot of students were cool there. They seem to have have staff to keep these kids under control like a state hospital or prison. It was like that kind of an atmosphere. I went home and then I would go to some, it was almost like a state prison. Well, there was, it was kind of like that. You were on a level system. But they had, like, store you could get points with activities on Fridays. They had shop classes I liked. They had culinary classes I liked. Anyway, my parents sent me to therapy. The first psychiatrist seemed like Dr. Silberman. I, I don't know if you've seen the Terminator. In the Terminator movies that had Arnold Schwarzenegger. For those who've seen these movies, those movies I know I'm talking about, it didn't seem. Anyway, he was in the first Terminator and the second Terminator. Sarah Connor was in the state hospital and he seemed like a very uncompassionate man. It didn't seem it was working out and, and he was responsible for putting me in there. 
It didn't seem like it was working out, and they sent me to Shelly, who was a more compassionate person I ever met. She meant well. I told her of my pain of going to school and not having a girlfriend. The therapy didn't help me, and it was was not enough. She meant well, but only Jesus was able to give me the compassion I needed. I had therapists at school. They meant well, but I was feeling good inside, and later on, only Jesus was able to help me. Going back on how to get through the five five of the hardest parts of Christian singleness. Christian Ruku was something I struggled with and felt I am so unworthy to be loved. I am so ugly and boring, so awkward around people. No one could ever love someone like me. When you start inflicting these negative blows on yourself in response to a prolonged uh, autism seems to hurt more than an average person does in the environment. Sexual temptation. When you ask people what the hardest part of singleness is for them, many Christians say that sexual temptation is their biggest challenge. So how can you overcome sexual temptation in your season of Christian singleness? Going back to self ruico since I was able to get no matter since I was unable to get a day in middle school and high school, I got access to X rated movies lived a fantasy life to try to overcome my depression like having a fantasy life struggled with masturbation since i was a teen never told anyone i viewed this never told anyone i struggled with this it did numb my depression my parents were able to get material things and have me experience not many people get to do my trips, but as for my depression, my loneliness, they weren't able to film me. They were just sinful people like all of us. After I left high school, I dated one girl after high school. Her name was Lisa. I was going to Atlantic Folk Tech to study to become a chef. I was good at baking and cooking at my high school. One of the few good things, as I said, about my school was I liked going to cooking class and Mr. Folks was one of my favorite teachers. Anyway, dating Lisa, it felt great having somebody in my life and was able to do things with. She had emotional problems like I did. Anyway, her mom placed her in a group home and after a year of dating each other, I was planning my graduate and was hoping to find a job and find a place to live and get her out of the group home and marry her. When my grandpa Ed was alive, he was going to help me find, help me for a place, but he passed away. And after I graduated from Atlantic Votech, Lisa found someone in the group home and broke up with me, and I went to work at odd jobs like restaurants and supermarkets and failed. At. I had a hard time getting along with other workers and keeping jobs. I was struggling with depression again. And sexual addiction. In 1995, internet was just coming out. Internet dating sites and finding other people with autism spectrum online wasn't available at the time. I tried going to social singles clubs under my father's suggestion. That failed. I felt no one cared for me. Not many people wanted anything to do with me because of my autism. I found no girls to go out with. Suffered mo emotional torment. It was torture to see couples my age holding hands and together not ha and together and not having anyone I was not in a normal school but in a school for the emotionally disturbed at one Star Trek convention actor William Sadler was there for those who are not familiar with that actor he was the main villain die hard to Colonel Stewart and Lutheran Sloan in Deep Space Nine and Convent Haywood in the Shawshank Redemption. Um, anyway, while I was there, a girl working at the convention approached me and said, can you give this photo to your girlfriend? You can give this photo to your girlfriend. I said, I have no girlfriend. That caused me emotional pain. Then I seen on TV about Russian women wanting American men, so I went to a a mail order agent 
mail order by agency and I correspond with a Russian girl. Her, na her name was Maria for a year and finally met her in Russia, spent a few months in Russia with her. When I was there, there were other girls in that country thought I was special and it felt good to be wanted. I thought everything was going great. Also, my dad had a friend starting a company. I was promised a good job. I thought it would be a success and not a failure. Then my father's friend was charged with DUI and spent months in jail and someone else bought the company. Maria dumped me and I thought my life was over. I had nothing to look forward to. Then I met Ollie Patterson at a job interview. We developed a friendship who I worked for never stopped caring about me, caring for me. Ollie never stopped inviting me to church. In two th January 2000, I decided to accept Ollie's invitation. I was planning on telling Ollie I was quitting two weeks after attending Calvary Chapel of Orlando. I was planning a pre pleasure trip to end my life because I couldn't live like this anymore and go to a country where prostitution is legal and was angry prostitution was illegal in the United States. When I attended Calvary Chapel of Orlando, I was expected to be bored. I didn't like the worship music at first, and then when I saw Pastor Gibb Allen for the first time, I first thought, what a boring looking guy, I said in my mind. He's just gonna bore me to death ask for money, I said in my mind, what a waste of my time. And when he spoke, he scared me to death like he knew what I was, I was planning suicide and my pleasure trip because the sermon he talked about was prostitution and pleasure trips and he didn't mention my name. After the service, I canceled my travel plans and spent weeks trying to figure out how did he know? I've told no one. Not my parents, no one. And then after I received a little booklet telling about God's love. In March 2000, I got saved and became a follower of Jesus. I started attending Calvary Chapel Orlando Singles Group. Ollie introduced me to Jim Cattleman. After I listened to my first listened to Pastor Gibb Allen's first sermon. After I listened to my first pastor, Pastor Gibb Allen, on the relation series and how a Christian relationship should be, I desired that. I wanted that. I just wanted one woman and find a good Christian spouse who I would feel emotionally good and thought it would be easy, but it wasn't. I went to a singles group under Jim Cattleman, who was the singles leader of Calvary Chapel for Lando, my intention was to find a mate after my girlfriend Russia dumped me in 1999. I thought there was hope. I had a better chance and hope I find, I thought there was hope and I would have a better chance finding a date, but the girls that attended there who I tried to start a courtship with were not interested and I didn't have any courtships or dates with women until I met Margaret. Going back to how to get through the five Hardest parts of Christian singleness, confusion. Another common struggle that Christians experience is confusion. Wanting to be married when you have no dating options can be hard because you know, knowing what to do next will not always be clear. Even when you have some good options or you're sh starting to date someone, the confusion doesn't go away. With every new season with Christian singleness, there will always be some element of mystery and a lot of unknowns. So how can you deal with confusion in your season of singleness? One of the best paths to take is when you are confused in this life is to focus more on what what you do know rather consistent dwelling on what you do not know. If you're wondering if you'll marry this person you just met, that's no big a question. Start with what you do know. The two of you agree to go on a date, focus on the date, not the next 10 dates that may or may not happen. The confusion part I had that wasn't mentioned was confusion on God's calling them courting women. I thought I was called to court 
a certain girl in my singles group, but wasn't interested. And I asked her to pray for me on finding a date. Another girl I thought I was interested who worked for a missionary organization. She wasn't. She seemed like a very pleasant girl. There were other girls I considered and was confused on God's will. Jim had come and had great singles. Ben's like Christmas parties, so like they were fun. But the first few years, they, I, for the first few years, I seemed to have had a hard time. They they seemed to have had a hard time understanding. They were kind to me, but there were times I felt I didn't exist. But later on, I realized they cared for me. And when I first realized they threw a birthday party for me, which was something I never haven't had in a long time. My parents always took me out to dinner and gave me a gift for my birthday, but I really, but I never really had a birthday party. Looking back at my thinking was sometimes clouded my, by my past experience. John McCarthy, after church, always invited me for lunch with the group. After group, a few weeks after I start attending my, my singles group was easier to adjust to adjust later on, moved to North Carolina. Another close friend was Mark Bloom. He worked for Campus Crusade for Christ. He's been a mission. He's been a missionary. After spared experience at a me mental hospital, like I went through, he struggled with depression, like I did. We were encouragement to each other. We connected so well. I always told Ollie how discouraging it was to find the right woman. I struggled with being content being single. I tried so many times to get my mind off it. I had a hard time watching movies. Tried not to watch movies. I knew they had couples my age and it to remind me I have nobody it hurts. Maybe most normal people don't have emotional disorders, don't go through that, but in my experience I suffered emotional weakness. In 2002 I went to England with my dad to an autograph show in Northampton. I, I met on the show uh, I met on that show James Bond actors like Richard Keel who played Jaws John Saxon who played Roper and Bruce Lee Enter the Dragon met Bond girls Maud Adams and Kelly Moreau and other stars after a few days we went to London to stay there five days it was a nice hotel I got to see the Tower of London the British Museum Charlotte's Home Museum seen outside Buckingham Palace I had one temptation I was alone taking a walk in the town and a prostitute hit it on me and offered services. I went in the cab and fled away, but I was in emotional pain reminding me I have no woman in my life and cried, cried to God, I'm trying to stay pure, but failed to break my porn addiction and masturbation addiction. Please send me a woman soon. I can't take this emotional pain anymore. For, tho for those who uh, for those of you who have autism, you understand how emotional pain feels like, and it also causes us physical sickness. Also, I felt like a failure because my autism disorder, nervous disorder, I couldn't do a successful job, and most women are are interested in men's ancestral career, which I couldn't do, and failed in food service career because I couldn't keep up with the fast pace. And a lot of my family joined the mill. Couple. Few, some of my family joined them. I wasn't a disciplined type, a man who was in, who was in to that. One positive thing on my nervous disorder: I never, I never asked a girl for sex. Was too nervous and afraid to alarm them in any way. I had a job with Agristarch 2 from October 1999 till July 2002. During my time at Agristarch, a co-worker who has been in a lot of successful relationships gave me tips on changing my hairstyle. Other stuff at places to go didn't seem to go well. I even tried expensive cologne. Didn't work. He liked to play around my single sets. It emotionally hurt, but he, but he meant, I felt he meant well. Then I worked for Select Foliage from July 
2002 till April 2000. And then I worked as a part-time custodian. Then I at worked as a substitute custodian for Lake Tech Center. Then I was off for full. I worked there from January 2004 till 2010. I worked evenings where Lake Tech, Monday through Thursday and Fridays, I worked. I was able to attend the singles ministry. In 2002, I still had no date or courtship. It was three years after Maria broke up with me and thought I would have had some kind of date within the two-year frame, but didn't. Online sites were starting and tried contacting women around my area online, not even a response. I tried Eat Harmony, this dating site, compare your compatibility to match you with someone close to your compatibility. They found no one for me and made me feel worse. I tried Match.com. I went to one singles get-together at singles mingling event, nothing. I paid a few hundred dollars to find it. Not one woman went out with me. I struggled being content and being single and try and was tired of suffering from this. And I told Jim Callen, advise me, go on, go on three words, advice for Christians on a matter. Advice for Christians along the matter. Sadly, they miss out on one of the most important things about being single. Did you know you could waste your time thinking about your f future? The Lord Jesus tells us there's Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own things sufficient for the day, its own trip. Then, that said, I'd like to encourage all single men out there who are excited to marry, three words of advice. Give all to God. Be the best man you can. Enjoy your single life. But I wasn't able to. Going back to the Christian, going back to the five hardest parts of Christian singleness and where it says you deal with the loneliness of Christian singles, there are some practical solutions like focusing on the relationship you do have spending time with family family close friends in your church community but perhaps one overlooked is acceptance sometimes we try to push the loneliness and deny we truly feel and if you're not honest about your loneliness, your pain, your disappointment, you will have. You will not be able to experience the comfort God wants to give you in your struggles. And you will have to allow yourself to be honest about your feelings. So you can be honest with God. God doesn't need you to deny your loneliness or a relationship disappointment. I believe he would rather you be honest so you could walk with you through the pain. Second Corinthians 1 verse 3 through 5. Praise and be the... God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble our, ourselves, just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ so we can. Wanting, wanting to be married when you have no dating options can be hard because what to do next will not always be clear. Even when you do have some good options or you're trying to start to date someone, the confusion doesn't go away. Perhaps, perhaps the most important s step to take when you're dealing with confusion, unknown to God, is the sovereignty of God. Many are the plans in the mind of a man but it's the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Proverbs 19.21 He also recommended reading Joshua Paris books before he denounced himself as a Christian and embraced the gay movement. Anyway, he was a Christian. For those who don't know him, he was a Christian author on books like Kiss Dane Goodbye, Boy Meets Girl. Not even him, but the problem was he was raised in a Christian home. I wasn't. But he didn't have the hardship school life I had. He didn't have autism like I did and didn't face what I, in his teen years, like I did. But it helped me prepare co for courtship. Going back to my Calvary Chapel Orlando years, Paul Minton had always done the filming for Calvary Chapel Orlando missions but moved to California. They needed someone to do filming on the Calvary Chapel Orlando's first Spain mission trip, so I said I could do it. One of my hobbies was movie making and video making. I had a VCR that could copy other non-protected VCR tapes. Also, I had a good 
video creative skills. I really enjoyed that. When I was a kid and a teen, it gave me peace when I created things. I had a collection of Star Trek figures and would be the same figures cheap and custom make them. And I also make custom made toys. In shop classes, I made Back to Future custom made hoverboard, but Sam, one of the students who treated me bad, grabbed my hoverboard, broke it into pieces. What's fun about it was helping to do it for God. So I went on a 10-day Spain missions trip in November 2002. Before going on this trip, when we were doing training for this trip, the group leader advised me to be careful pursuing a romantic relationship with, with people of the country of Spain. I was afraid of going after him saying this. Going through the emotional pain again, of going through that, I try, I was tired of struggling, of not being in a courtship with a girl, and told the group leader these concerns. He advised me of the same thing Jim Callum said. I couldn't, I didn't run into any girls to pursue a relationship with in Spain. This trip, we really got to know each other real good, the good parts of ourselves and the bad parts of ourselves. There were some of the parts. I didn't really enjoy. Like the conf like the confusion part. Um, um, when I was recording Pat Pastor Carlos's sermon, I had to charge my camera. We went out to eat, and I didn't know we were going to the ocean. I said I'd like to get my camera from the ocean, and they they, they said they couldn't do that. There was no time, and I was kind of a upset. I just wish I was notified ahead of time. I could have plugged it in the restaurant or something like that, but my group leader loved saying, well, mysteries and surprises. I hate mysteries and surprises. That's how I was. And they didn't understand my anxiety and sensitivity issues I had, and they seen that my mental breakdown side for the first time that side I didn't want anyone to see it was like David Barron didn't want anyone to see me transported into the Hulk every time I was upset I had a hard time understanding the group leader and he and I had issues I would close myself in the room break down praying God help me under them to understand me and forgive me please find a way to make it possible I tell more of my experiences on a mission trip in a future teaching I had problems with authority and leadership roles. After my experience at my Spain mission trip and after everyone seen my mental breakdown, I was embarrassed. I prayed to God to be cured of my mental breakdown. I I have had my issues with regular believers at times, but I know remaining a Christian was the right path because knowing how compassionate Jesus is and that's the kind of person who would understand a person like me and didn't and didn't seem most people in my experience did. In my experience in the special needs group, I went from seventh grade to twelfth grade. I've seen how staff treats certain some staff treat a uh, mental breakdown. They time sometimes unnecessary and strain and restrain them. Some of the staff were verbally cruel that one of provoking the students. They should have do this first. Ephesians 6 verse 4 fathers do not provoke your children to anger but bring them in the discipline and instruction of the lord there were a few that were able to do that at the school i attended a lot of people at calvary chapel Orlando didn't experience what i did and prayed how can i have other believers understand others like me two months after the spain mission trip calvary chapel Orlando was offering bible college courses on biblical counseling and learning to do sermons. After my traumatic experience before I got saved, I wanted to do an organization to help those who had autism and traumatic and abusive situations like me, and therapy didn't help me. So also my difficulty with my main mission trip and my social other social situations, I decided to sign up for the biblical counseling class. Those in the class were future pastor of who I would be building a new church with, who became senior pastor of that church at a closer location to my home, then home outdoor and others. Roman Williams, who worked for Calvary Chapel of our Fort Lauderdale, introduced the biblical Calvary Chapel Bible College. I told Roman my interest in counseling. He said, if you're interested in professional career, this is not the class for you. 
I said, I'm not interested in a psychiatric career. It didn't work for me. Then that answer came, my visions of desires. The, the course was done by videotape by John Chanelli of Calvary Chapel of Fort Lauderdale. He spoke against psychiatry and, the, and that was the vision I had. I felt it didn't help me, but messed me up. So I finished the class, took an audio tape class from Chuck Smith, who was the founder of Calvary Chapel Churches and learned to do sermons. In 2003, at the time before Facebook and YouTube were made, there was only Yahoo groups. Ollie found a Yahoo autism group and suggested that to me called the As Asby Dugout, mostly UK group, and found and find an autism group and felt I I should fi find a girl who has similar disorders like like me. It was a secular group, and I also attended a secular fraud autism group and hoped to find someone like me and witness to them. So during those courses. I tried to witness to those with autism disabilities. Most of them were disinter disinterested. The Florida group leader I know, she seemed to have treated people with autism like children, didn't, didn't seem to like me. I, I tried inviting the Florida group to Calvary Chapel of Orlando Singles group, but none were interested. I was doing searches for the Christian autism groups, but none became available. So I posted my first sermon on the Asby dugout. It was written, but it wasn't done by video, and a lot of them were outraged. So since there were no known Christian autism groups, I couldn't find, and later on there would be. So I felt called on August 16, 2003 to start one. The Christian Asperger Autism Group, which was founded by me, but later became the Christian Asperger Autism and Brain Disorder Ministries. Then I promoted on the Aspie Dugout, the Christian Asperger Autism Group. Doug used assistant pastor of Calvary Chapel Orlando, Rick McArthur, on training, helping me train on sermons. Then the Florida group leader posted mental health services that cost money, advised them against it. It didn't help me and told the, uh, my group. None of, the, none of them except one was interested and one of them blasted me for sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And the Florida group leader told me I was out of line and I should have had more self-control, lashed out my feelings toward her, explained how therapy didn't help me, it hurted me. and then, emotionally better as a child of Jesus so and, and so I never received messages from the Florida group again and was out of the group. The person who was part of the group, I will say his name was Tom, he told me he used to attend a Christian singles group and asked to leave on a misunderstanding. Another person who attended church felt he didn't exist. Jim Callman stepped down and fat and found Lydia and wound up marrying her, which was the reason another leader took over. In late 2004 to mid-2005, a lot of bad changes were going in my life. It was decided after four years, singles group would be moved to Thursday night, and it seems I lost hope of finding a spouse, and most of the single friends were either moving or finding spouses. It was getting smaller. I suggested having a Thursday nights one month and Friday nights the other month, and my idea was rejected. I walked out upset, angry at God. Proverbs 19.21, Many plans are in the mind of a man, but what is the purpose of the Lord will stand. Anger toward, going back to anger towards God. When we do not understand how God, God actually loves us, but we're experiencing a different expect, expression of love than he is giving. Anger can occur. God's love for us is not expressed through giving us everything we want the way we want. His love is also expressed through saving us and others the pain or death. John 11, 3 through 6. In Romans 8, 29 through 29, God's ultimate 
expression of love for you and me is to do what will shape us into his own image of Christ for his glory. I was upset with God and felt he wants me to live a tortured life. That's how I felt. I was going to try to... Rick MacArthur was leaving to move to North Carolina, my longtime mentor. It was suggested I connect to to my second, soon to become second pastor who was starting a new church as its senior pastor. His son has autism. They thought it was suggested a great man. So I started helping Bill in that church. I used to do tape ministry with Kevin Sharp at Calvary Chapel Orlando. So I record a video of the building of the new church and the first service of it. I have always, I have always, as I said, enjoyed video making and creating things. They, maybe I could head to tape ministry the, of the design, but someone else did that. It was decided. They rented the YMC for the church building two years later they had a building of their own i had a hard time adjusting there were hardly any people at the church that were single and felt emotionally painful in that situation it felt like torture in 2005 my future wife margaret robert joined the christian Hasberg autism group she was engaged to another man at the time and corresponded with me by yahoo instant message when doug announced of opening a singles group and was looking for a singles leader. I tried volunteering. I figured I would be perfect for the job. I would try to do similar what Jim Connellman would do and I could do sermons. I have creative ideas, but I was turned down. In, 2000, in June 2005, my friend Mark Bloom died of leukemia. I took his death hard and I felt I was alone. I felt no matter what I tried to get my mind off of being without anyone. It failed, and it seemed like a lot of my support people were gone. I thought by being single leader, I could get my mind off that situation, so I stopped going to church for about a month. Mainly, I couldn't take the emotional torture seeing mostly married couples. I tried a Christian porn addiction site program suggestion of my second pastor but the problem was it was suggested you confess it to your wife I had no spouse and went emotionally crazy so I quit the program I I kept corresponding with a few members in my group the hardest was females because I had nobody in my struggles I felt as I considered courtship more than helping them I felt as a Hang on, man, I couldn't be a successful ministry leader. I've had bad self-control, struggled with porn addiction. I kept corresponding with Margaret. We seem to have had, had a lot of things in common. We both have autism. We both love Star Wars and Star Trek and have a passion from autism ministry. The problem was she wasn't available and was tired of being, mo and I was tired of being emotionally tortured. Then it seemed it, I would die a single man, go through the pain of not having anyone. I told God, if I have to go through this, I'm going to commit suicide. And said to him, I don't want to suffer what Mark went through. And he never married. And struggled the same thing. And I can't return to church and handle that church, that torture. In an article by Julia Sari, a psychologist... My, my science, clinical, psychologist, bachelor's degree. What's the purpose of sexuality if I am single? It's not just about sex. Your sexual has spiritual and relational significance. For many Christians, the extent of their biblical sex education was the encouragement to save sex for marriage. While, while valid, that advice has proven to be the best insufficient in light of real life sexual questions and tensions and read my other article about why the purity narrative isn't enough what is the purpose of sexuality if I am single 
What if I never get married, in other words? Why did God create us as sexual people? Why does he care so much about how we steward our sexuality? Sexuality is confusing the many. Many of us, we do not understand its underlying purpose by responding practically every sexual question with some version of safe sex for marriage. We miss the larger explanation that helps us the sense of biblical sexuality and met, and why is that statement might shock you god did not create sexuality primarily for marriage as a single the stewardship of your sexuality is simply not to keep yourself pure until god gives your spouse your sexuality and spiritual and relational significance that su suppresses saving sex for marriage his covenant love designed us as a sexual people to teach us about some marriages, not only an echo of it, he intentionally created our sexuality to be a metaphor that teaches us as covenant love. Every one of us, single or married, male or female, sexually active or celebrant, has something to do to learn about God's love of our sexuality. If this is strange thought to you, the ultimate reason, not the only one, is why we are sexual to make God people more knowable. Think of it this way. Everything God created on earth was intentionally designed to express something about his character. The Bible refers to physical things like um, trees and Sorry. Trees, water, wind, animals to communicate their special truth to us. Likewise, our experiences of hunger, thirst, vitality, illness, our metaphors, our spiritual need and condition. God was just as deliberate when he created. God created them deliberately, knowing that one day he would teach us about Jesus. You're not created. You were not created with sexual organs and desires so you could get married and have babies. The whole drama is just sexuality, including singleness, marriage, and our peace of the Lord. The Christian tradition that sex is made for marriage explains sexuality in a narrow, narrow manner that leaves singles confused. If sex is for marriage, why do you as a single man have so such strong sexual desire. Why doesn't God take these longings away until he brings a spouse? And why would he care if you have sex with someone to whom you're not married? Uh, to answer these questions by realizing God created sexuality to help us understand covenant love, covenant love goes way beyond romantic feelings, even the joy of close friendship. The love is based, the promise that can't be and and that it's God's love for his people. The overreaching message of the Bible is God's covenant love and the holy God pursues us with single passionate love to bring us into fellowship. But sexually is a prompt tangle reminder of his truth and how. Sexual desire invitation. I've, for most of these men and women, sexual desire represents a major struggle. They want to stop looking at porn and stop masturbating. They wonder if it's a big deal to sleep with someone they're dating. They want to know how to push pause on sexual fans because their sexual drive seems to create so much drama, temptation, and shame. It's often viewed as a bad thing. Sometimes I... And what they should want God to do is empower their discipline and strengthen their obedience because sexual desire is a gift and we sh we shouldn't ask God to take one of these gifts away from us. We have to remember that sexual desire is not only a good thing but a God thing. The Creator intentionally gave you the longings you sh share your body with an another person. And every one of us, Satan 
twisted and tainted these desires so they represent selfish pursuits or shameful restraint but th this was not God's design from the beginning our sexual desire was to was created to remind us that we were made for him to see not a hookup or sexual release looking at a computer screen but for the sacrificial life giving intimacy represent the coming For most Christians, sexual desire will lead us to the covenant vows of marriage, largely because of sexual romantic longings. We will sacrifice time and money for our vocational goal to pursue love. But marriage relationship is not only a picture of true intimacy on which we were created. Marriage is not the answer for your loneliness. It is a metaphor for the answer. That's why marriage is as great it may be will ultimately fail to satisfy your deep being longing and thought me why do you think there will be no marriage in her because in the reality of true intimacy with god will no longer be needed think of a time okay train the lesser for the greater. Many Christians have bought into the cheap version of sex even within marriage. Sex is not just a personal fulfillment, satisfaction of your sexual desire. It's also a calling for something evidently greater. It's a physical reminder that we were never meant to live in isolation or selfish pleasure. We were created for promise, vulnerability, and for the pursuit of exchange of love that compels us to give ourselves away. As a single person, you're invited to give yourself away through self-denial and service to the family God. Your unmet sexual longings and needs are a physical mind that you were meant for intimacy, ultimate intimacy, intimacy with God. But please don't think that the right person will end the unmet longings of self-denial. And that's the sake of Christ. Mar marriage road creates its own demands to stretch it. even the Garden of Eden before the fall. Adam did not complete Eve. She wanted more and needed more. Your sexuality was to to teach you about a faithful God, about longing for him and the per, pursue him, the joy of him and the promise of him. Don't get distracted by the metaphor. You miss the real thing in your heart longs. Loneliness. As, as I said on, on how you deal with Christian spending time with family and friends and community can make you feel connected and love. And if you're not about honest about your loneliness and your pain, you will not be able to experience the comfort God will give you and you need to allow yourself to be honest about your feelings with God. Let's look in a couple of verses too. Um, 2 Corinthians 1 through 5 again. Praise to be the God, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our trouble, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so we also, our comfort abounds through Christ. Psalm 27, verse 9. Do not. Turn there, Psalm 27, verse 9. Do not turn, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away from anger. You have been my helper. Do not re reject me or forsake me, God my Savior, through my father and my mother forsake me. The Lord will see, teach me in your ways, Lord. Lead me on a straight path of my life. Also, also, another thing us autism people struggle with are like with um, when we're feeling emotional pain, like Job's friends. When Job lost everything, I mean, we're we're afraid to. Like with me, I was afraid. 
to go to church because they said that I should join my signal. It was like emotional pain. I just was afraid to feel emotional pain. This is like Job felt when his friends were discouraging him. You know what I mean? And we'll go. We'll go there. Okay. Um, when his friends arrived, the first first seven days they mourn and uh, for they open their mouths they 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 bring further hurt to job and here they were seeing them only adding to jo job's loss and suffering sometimes it feels that way when other believers who seem to they really care about us but we feel they don't they don't understand what we're going through so we try to isolate ourselves In an article, an article done by Dr. Bill Iger, Geneva College, it, it's in Proverbs 18, when a man who isolates himself seeks his own desires, arranges all wise judgments, who live by himself follows his own, he is angry by advice of any kind, the man who holds and seeks Precast to bear his teeth defies all sound judgment. Some people live alone because friends and family have abandoned them. That's some cases. Psalm 27 10 When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. And solely survivors like Robinson Crusoe or the hero of Castaway go through that. But the loner is someone who purposely holds himself. Aloof like the Unabomber, the Matician, like the Unabomber. Many people doggling away move even further away from const from one another constant. Many claim the name of Christ, but proudly stay steer clear of his body, the church. They listen to radio preachers, read Christian books, even old church at home. People who require patience who differ from some point or even worse offer advice who are not for them better alone what is a loner's heart he wants what he wants in his way giving ideas taking his ball goes home give and take accepting advice or serving others is not for him he shows the church society and his family who is gone if he could marry he would marry himself a small modern fate has attracted attention lately as people have whole wedding ceremonies for themselves alone and says to such a person look it's not good for you to be alone Genesis 2.18 imagine the prodigal son and Jesus parable being told he was going to lose his money and be left be lonely if he left home wrathfully he rejects advice goes off on a whim to a far country where he promptly wastes his money and righteous living, wasteful living, and soon friendless, stuck feeding pigs who slop he was hungry enough to eat himself, and only when the lonely son finally came to his senses he humbly returns to his family where his follow up. Every proud loner needs to come to his senses and seek human companionship and learn to listen to advice. It's not good for man or woman to be alone. All followers of Christ belong. In his visible church outside, there's no ordinary possibility of salvation. Those are good points from Dr. Bill Ager. A lot of us on this spec, there's another reason. A lot of us on the autism spectrum struggle with emotional insensitivity and fear getting our feelings hurt like Job's friends hurt at him instead of comforting him. They hurt him even more words hurt. Even more. Words hurt. People with Autism can experience extreme emotions. They sometimes react to certain situations, underreact to others. When something unpredictable occurs, it can be hard for an autistic man to keep their emotions in check. The transition from one setting or activity to the next can be particularly challenging. Someone like for example, someone with autism, for instance, may burst into if there's an unexpected change of plans or irritate if their routine is thrown off. We have difficulty in relaying to others' thoughts 
inability to participate in conversations, difficulty in understanding figures of speech, inability to build friendships, relationships, taking difficulty in sticking to one conversation, difficulty in regulating emotions and responding them, unexpected outbursts in response to minor changes, rigid work schedules, daily retention. Also, we struggle with sin just like everybody else. We struggle in hearing from advice from other believers because we don't want to be in emotional pain and seem to hurt more than an average person. It is evident this world is full of suffering. Physical, emotional, and spiritual pain have been part of the human experience. The archetypical example of our suffering was Jesus Christ who persecuted was persecuted and crucified by Roman officials. Suffering will decom, but God can give us grace and power to overcome every trial, fulfill our purpose and mission as King Bible give and kingdom. Dear friends, do not Dear friends, do not be surprised at the ordeal the fear or ordeal that has come to test you, even though something strange has happened to you. But rejoice in much as you participate in sufferings as Christ that may be overjoyed, glory. If you're insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. If you suffer not as a murderer or faith or any type of crime or matter, if you suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed and praise God that you bear the name for its judge for it's time to judgment to begin with God's household and those who do not obey obey it's hard for the righteous to be saved 1 Peter 4 19 for those who suffer according to God will should commit themselves to the faithful creator and continue to do good 1 Peter 5 to the elders along you I, I appeal as a Felt elder and a witness to, of Christ's sufferings also will share in the glory to be built. Be the shepherd's flock under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you, not pursuing personal gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it or those entrusted you, but being examples to the flock. When the chief shepherd appears, you'll see the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders or close yourselves with humility because God poses the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. So unto thou resist him. Standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is going to go undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And, and the grace of God who called you to his eternal glory, you have suffering for a little while with himself, will restore you and make you strong and firm and step back to the Amen. And one last verse, 2 Timothy 2, 24. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to knowledge of truth, and they will come to their senses, escape the travel, trap of the devil, who has taken them captive to do his will. 2 Corinthians 1, 3. Praise to the God our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Father of compassion and comfort, and the God of comfort who comforts all of us in our troubles so we could comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we see from God. This is what Christian fellowship is supposed to be. As I said, on the autism spectrum, we have unmet desires and want our desires to be met, and we're afraid of suffering and fear our feelings get hurt. Two days later, Margaret told me she broke her engagement off with the man she was engaged to. After she found some disturbing things about him and she didn't hear 
hear anything of my struggles on what I told God. So I courted her and we started our courtship. I, I volunteered in the children's ministry for a while, I had more focus on God. I live in Florida and Margaret lived in West Virginia. We correspond by Yahoo I am. In 2006 of April, I flew to Pittsburgh, met her for the first time, spent a few weeks in that area, fell in love with her. Our date was our first date was in Melman's cafeteria. I only told Ollie and my folks my relationship with Margaret and didn't want anyone knowing because I met some before I met her, some of my friends seemed to try to get me content being single. They didn't seem to understand my sensitivity. I was afraid my emotional pain and the painful past I had. I felt there was a great need to have a spouse who was my equal. I didn't have, expect every woman to fall in love with me. I just wanted one who wanted me. But when I was talking to Ollie and my second senior pastor overheard me, I felt nervous. I didn't want my senior pastor found out, and he did. And he did it. And most people to find out because I was tired of telling people to be content being single and be careful or any messages you have to be content being single to be fulfilled as a married person. She traveled to Florida in July. She met my parents at the airport. I introduced her to my friends and family. They all approved her. Nobody talked me out of her pursuing her in the past. There were other girls I told people I could serve pursuing. They taught, taught me out. Nobody taught me on my courtship with more. They either got tired of fighting with me or she was misright. She spent 4th of July with my family in 2006, Friday after things I proposed to her, she accepted. I wanted to do premarital counseling to thank God what he did for me. But with Rick out of the picture and Gib without an assistant pastor, then Gib suggested my senior pastor did the, my second senior pastor did the premarital counseling. I felt uncomfortable at first when I did. I had a hard time getting along with him at times, but when he agreed to do it, which he did, this was the first premarital counseling he didn't talk us out of it. He, it was like preparing us. And it did help our marriage. And I respect him to this day. I have great respect for him. His son with autism is a grown man. What a wonderful man he has turned out to be. Today, my view of my second pastor, he has his autism son turned out to be a happy child and a young man. I advised some of the do's and don'ts for his son based on my past experience of his age. After we did that in June, one of my dad's friends, Nolan, Nolan Sims, had a convention at Kennedy Space Center where there were astronauts signing autographs. One of them was Buzz Aldrin. We got to meet him, take a picture of him. August 5th, 2007, we got married. Some other minister did the wedding in West Virginia, Ogilvy at Wilson Lodge. My mom said to my mother-in-law, it was a miracle I found someone. It was God who made this possible. Matthew 19:26. But Jesus beheld them and said to him, with, with people, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. I wasn't, I want you all to know marriage doesn't fulfill you and struggle and still struggle with our sense of and desires. I struggle still with porn. Sometimes my wife isn't available 24-7. She can't be. We're all human beings. Porn has been a hurt killer in our enjoying our Christian singleness. It's hurt mine. It hurt my contentment. I missed, probably missed out on some things. Also, those girls who agree to post noon in those dirty magazines and videos get paid only a couple of thousand dollars, and those magazines and videos make millions off of them, and they get none of these profits. I met some of these girls at these types of shows and they told me that. A once well-known pastor of a mega church, he was addicted to porn, caused him to resign from being senior pastor and his marriage ending. A well-known porno star man who was in porn since the 1970s, I'm not going to mention his name, he is now being accused of rape. That is, that is a mess you can easily get into when you have premarital sex with multiple partners. Now, I don't know if he's guilty or, or not of doing this, 
but he is now guilty before God and should be worried where he's going where, where he dies. His biggest priority, other than a lawyer, is accepting Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and repenting of his sins. Samson fell from God on his lust for Delilah. King David, which um, rightly named, <laughs> fell from God because of his lust for Bathsheba. Also, do you hear very many successful marriages in the entertainment Hollywood industry, the entertainment industry where you're supposed to live happily ever after isn't really true, like romantic stories like Cinderella. But you notice that they put movie stars, movie good-looking type stars, to have the happy ever after, ever after, most of them, in romantic scenes. You don't see them use people with disabilities in those types of movies. Well, I can tell you God has matched people with someone with disabilities. Johnny Erickson Tate is a founder of Johnny and Friends is paralyzed from the shoulders down since she was 17 and she's been happily married to her husband for 40 years. Sandra Wells, wonderful woman, who was one of the people who attended my Spain message trips and attended my singles group is paralyzed from a spinal disorder is married to a wonderful man. John Knapp, one of the first People to join the Christian Asperger Autism Group has been married to his first wife, Sharon. She died, and he remarried to another woman by the name of Jackie. Wonderful guy. Some of you are hurting. I feel your pain. And what I went through, not able to find a spouse for a long time, hurt it. God brought me, Margaret, a gift. I always treasure I was Raising the entertainment and Hollywood business, and these hot local women I met had no interest in me. Just themselves. Poor mean women what and filthy magazines made women what every man should desire and help cause out of control sexual hunger. That is not what God intended to use women as in hunger for sex. For some of us on the autism set, we feel that porn. That's the only mate we will ever have, which is, in, is Satan's lie. The power of porn addiction, hyperfocus, and disillusion. Some people look at por internet pornography now and not become porn acts. Others get hooked on porn very quickly, spend hours online, often jeopardizing their work, neglecting their families, wreck their relationships. Why are some people more at risk at porn addiction? We look at we look immediately for childhood trauma that might be got trouble with mental health, which could be treated to re being glued to a computer screen looking for hours on ending looking at porn can be seen with adults with autism as a symptom of that disorder. Name the autism adult is more likely to be a porn addict because he cannot tear himself away from the pornography, meaning he cannot shift his attention away from one thing into another as easily as someone else. Okay, skip something. Sorry. That's what I had childhood trauma. I was one of the ones who felt unloved and no one wanted me. If being ra raised born is okay, turn me into an addict. Another sad thing on porn, it, it helps turn some addicts into pedophiles. Porn does not satisfy your, hun your hunger. It increases your hunger for more. Sexual temptation isn't in just in, mo in the movies and porn. It seems even in the news I could tempt you. As for me, I... Before I met Margaret, it hurt seeing other couples, and one I slammed and tried to get my mind off of it. When I went to Calvary Chapel Singles every two weeks, every week, I kept in touch with them, but I was mostly alone and felt it wasn't enough. I enjoyed the fun activities. I enjoyed all that. Many of the Christian spectrum attend autism groups that are, are regular non-Christian. That's okay. Sometimes we feel we don't exist in church and feel alone. In Genesis 2.18, God says, It's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper who is right for him. But this verse says, 
The helper would not always be a spouse, but God promised us at least a helper. Turn to John 14, verse 16. And I will ask the Father, he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth that cannot accept him because it sees him nor knows him, but you know him. He lives with you. In, ver in verse 18, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Sometimes struggling with sinful nature, he doesn't seem to be there, but he is. And it's okay to be honest with Jesus. I always was honest with him on my feelings with him and kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time doing your will. It's hard in a sexual society where we're bombed with sexual temptation almost everywhere. God never tended things to be that way. Those trying to for find a courtship, be yourself. Don't try to be someone else. If you want to be someone else, try to be like Jesus. That person will know the real you sooner or later. I found Margaret at a group in ministry. God led me to create the Christian Asperger Autism and Brain Disorder Ministries now. She has a passion like I do to minister to others. This ministry is currently a fellowship for Christians on the autism spectrum. I believe God has planted this on my heart. God did this miracle for me and found me Margaret. The Christian Asperger and Brain Disorder Ministries, I believe God is calling me on a couple of future goals to minister to hurting people with autism disorders, children's teens and adults who are going through a similar hurt like I did. Our churches don't know what to do with people like me, that emotional sensitivity issues, and I'm hoping God will use places like Johnny and Friends. One of the desires I believe God planted in my heart is to open a Zoom autism Bible fellowship where people on the autism spectrum don't have to be alone and have a place to go to. If they're having a hard time going to church like I do. Another desire I believe God put in my heart is to help people find a church. And I have the Christian Asperger Autism Brain Discourse work with the churches to fill the loneliness and needs the people on the spectrum need. Matthew twenty four fourteen. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations then shall the end come. Some people on the autism spectrum haven't been preached the gospel yet. Some of you on the autism spectrum are not attending a church because a believer hurt you or you're afraid of being hurt. Some of you are not in a courtship and can't stand the emotional pain. Jesus understands. Talk to him. As the Father loved, John 15, 9, as the Father loved me, I too love you. Remain in my love. Isaiah 41, 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. And I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. I know a lot of you are in pain probably right now. God may not seem like he cares, but he does. He is, he is there for you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. Some of these things were probably hard on us on the autism spectrum. They feel like emotional pain. You're not trying to hurt us. I know we have a hard time suffering. Please help us with our suffering. I pray for those without churches. I pray you'll lead them. Send them people. Lead average Christians to minister to them without them feeling the pain Job spreads to them. It's hard in a sinful world. And I, I pray you'll help us with our addictions, especially mine. Even being as a married man, I struggle. I pray you'll have me grow God and have others grow out of these addictions that what on sex what you attended I pray this in Jesus name and for those who are hurting on Valentine's Day 
I pray you'll give them a special one with comfort. Tell them you're with them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you all take care. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm done.